Hello and welcome back to Signs and Wonders. What would you call a wonder for yourself? Mostly people think of wonders as something that makes them feel surprised or sometimes even shocked because something is so unusual. And it, this unusual thing invariably is something positive. We wouldn't call it a wonder if the china started to fly around the room. We would say there might be a poltergeist and that would be regarded as something negative. But a wonder can be a rainbow, a very, very beautiful rainbow. And that's not totally unusual, but sometimes they are very striking and we stand there and go, wow, like that. But in the kind of biblical sense, a wonder is something unusual, perhaps a miracle. So when we look at what kind of things are regarded as wondrous, when miracle workers uh, are claimed as saints and holy people because they can do the wonders, then we are looking at some quite interesting stuff, really. I've recently been reading a book called The Man Who Could Fly, who was a, a, a saint, Saint Joseph. He was brought up in an Italian town, and he, this was in the early 1600s. And quite early in his life, he started to display strange powers. You could say he could he could see through people. He was an he was somebody who knew what was going on in people's minds, and he would. He would accuse them of nasty thoughts and tell them that they should be good. He was quite, um, he was quite sanctimonious, you could say, and critical and judgmental of people. And he was told by his superiors to kind of uh, cool it a bit. You know, the local priest said, "No, no, don't go on at people so much, so hard, because it, it won't bring them to God any quicker if you do that." Anyway, Joseph becomes um, ordained as a priest. And once he's ordained as a priest, his wonders become even more wonderful. Having already been thought of as somebody who perhaps you might avoid him because he could kind of tell you the truth about yourself, he started levitating. And this is what he became famous for, and, and the church didn't like it, and... Um, the uh, church put him through the Inquisition and then tried to keep him in a, in a monastery so they could keep him under wraps. So why should the church treat him like that? Of course, you know, he was doing things, the kind of things that Jesus is supposed to have done, right? So we go back to Jesus. He doesn't, quote, levitate exactly, but he walks on water, which is pretty much the same kind of thing, isn't it? We go back earlier to the famous Greek philosopher Pythagoras, and he was reputed to be able to levitate. There's one report of him coming down a flight of stairs without touching the steps. So he's just kind of floating down. And like Jesus, Pythagoras is healing people. And these are wonders. And why are they wonders? Because they are telling people that what they expect from the material world might not always be the same depending on who is involved, right? So it's to do with states of consciousness. The mystics who have these experiences, oh, and another mystic who's a bit earlier than, than Joseph who could fly, was St. Teresa of, of, of a villa. She was a previous century, and she was reported to levitate, and she was extremely embarrassed about it. She told her nuns to sit on her uh, her gown and on her habit to stop her rising up when she was in a state of ecstasy. And that's a key word here, ecstasy. It means standing outside yourself. So somebody who goes into that religious or mystical ecstasy, and somehow their body just make, takes take, lifts off is standing outside themselves so they're standing outside their own uh, sense of being they're transcending and what is at issue here is how human beings think 
or believe or what they believe about the relationship between the body and the soul or the mind. And of course, for many generations, Western philosophy has suggested that soul and body are two separate kinds of things. This is what we call Cartesian dualism, because Descartes, uh, the French philosopher, very famously brought it into the Western way of thinking, or, or, or he consolidated it as a Western way of thinking. Your body and your mind are two separate things, and they don't have any kind of um, intrinsic relationship with each other, um, ex except that somehow that spirit or that soul or that mind is part of what animates the body. Poor old Descartes, he had a tough time with that problem. Modern philosophers call it the hard problem, the problem of consciousness. Where does it arise from? Consciousness just a byproduct, epiphenomenon they call it, in philosophical speak, of the brain? Or is the brain some kind of receiver transmitter, um, an organ which is tapped into mind in general on a larger scale? And of course, a lot of modern philosophers and sceptical atheists and people of that kind do not like that idea at all. So it's not just the church that doesn't like the idea of the saints who levitate. They're very suspicious of them always throughout history. The ch Catholic Church, who, who's, who the one, that's the church that gives sainthoods. When a saint displays these things, that's not necessarily going to make them labelled as a saint, right? So there was, you know, throughout the throughout the generations of mystics and saints, they the ones who could perform the greatest wonders were tended to be the ones who were sidelined, possibly even tortured, and you know, possibly put to death, because the church might decide that this was not anything to do with God, it was to do with the other side. The dark stuff. So then that brings us to the question of the relationship between magic and mysticism. Because in some ways, a person who performs wonders and is described as a mystic or a spiritual teacher, even somebody like Jesus, could be described as performing acts of magic. Because magic is what you do when you change the expected situation or the expected event or the expected material thing, you change it in a way that nobody expects. And of course, stage magicians do this by sleight of hand. But people like Jesus were healing the sick, bringing back eyesight, and getting people off their beds to walk, and on all kinds of other um, miracles. What's the difference between a miracle and a, and, and a magical performance? That's a big question, isn't it? And there are some very old legends, unusual legends, about Jesus, which have nothing to do with the biblical stories, which have always um, puzzled me because they seem like they are uh, messages about him that, you know, he was a kind of magician. One of the stories tells that a parents in the village would come to his parents, Mary and Joseph, and complain about Jesus because Jesus was doing things to their children and um, uh, which weren't very nice. And they told, you know, keep your child away from ours because he's naughty. He's, you know, he's doing magic things. And one particular magic thing that he did was to make two little birds out of clay. And he held them in his hands and he blew on them and they flew away. Now, it's kind of puzzled me. Um, those two stories have puzzled me, as well as the one in the biblical gospels where he, he um, blasts the fig tree because the fig tree hasn't got any fruit for him. Those kind of stories make you wonder, well, this person had powers. They had, this person had powers 
right early on in their life. Where do those powers come from? And is it the case that, you know, he had to learn how to deal with them because, you know, the other children, their parents didn't like it. And gradually, perhaps, he became to understand how those powers could be used for positive ends, for healing people. But perhaps he had to learn that. Perhaps he didn't arrive knowing everything about who he was and what his destiny was. He had to work it out as he went along. So whether you ever think of yourself as being a healer or or wish in your heart that you could perform miracles for people because you'd like to change things for the better for them, then you know, keep working on it really because people out of their desire to create good things for other people can certainly make good things for other people happen in a way that we can't truly measure or evaluate at the moment and because when that happens it's mostly anecdotal the scientists will just dismiss it but things do happen people do witness miracles and when they do they are wonders personally I haven't seen anybody lately actually levitating in in front of me or even in my circuit of um, things that I follow I haven't come across those claims it might well be that the people who can levitate are keeping themselves under wraps at the moment because they put themselves in quite a dangerous position and also another thing is that if they reveal themselves to a disbelieving public they may actually lose their ability to levitate because they're surrounded by people who are willing them not to do it so this is the tangled net of mind body spirit relationship and i do think that we're on the verge at this time of history of perhaps getting to understand it in a better way and perhaps we will see more miracles and we will be able to trust that the miraculous can happen for us just at the right moment. So keep meditating, because meditation definitely puts you in the way of miracles. And keep shining. Many blessings. Mm.